Hi, I am sex and relationship coach Caitlin V, and today I'm here to talk about the subject that's been on all our minds, pegging. Now, I think the word pegging probably comes from like peg as in like peg leg or put the peg into the pegboard, but I always think about it as a woman named Peggy, like pegging was somehow named after my Aunt Peggy. I'm sorry, Aunt Peggy, if you ever see this, but that's what I think of when I hear the word pegging. But pegging, the act, actually refers to a, for the most part, heterosexual man receiving a strap-on or a dildo in his butt from his female partner. In other words, lady doing her dude in the butt. That is pegging as as classically defined uh, by Caitlin V. And I'm here today to explore why pegging. Like, why is pegging such a hot thing? Why has pegging become a concept in our culture? Why does it have its own name? Why did it steal my aunt's name? And how to do it? Because if it's something that interests you, I highly recommend that you give pegging a try. Because listen, this channel is here to help you have the best sex life ever. I work as a coach one-on-one -on -one to help my clients have the best sex life ever. And you know what? The best sex life ever requires that we be open to literally anything and everything that is within reason, that is like within our moral code, of course. I'm not saying just like anything. You're not going to hurt people. Blah, blah, blah. But when I say anything and everything, I mean, if it's a thought of pegging, if you're just like, oh, Caitlin, I'm going to watch this video, but I'm very against it. I feel kind of gross. I even, am I gay for even watching this? I don't really like it. I beg of you to be open-minded. There's a whole lot of body out there for you to enjoy. Okay. So why would a heterosexual male want to take a silicon or glass or whatever toy strapped to his female partner up his rear end. Why would a man do that? Well, there's a number of reasons. Number one is the prostate. Number one, forget the prostate, it feels good, okay? Your butt has nerve endings, your anus has nerve endings, and men, you out there, male-bodied people, you got blessed with a special organ that only y'all have that is called the prostate. It feels really good to be stimulated. It gives you bigger, badder, better shooting further orgasms when it is stimulated. But imagine if there was like a magic button that was tucked about two to three inches inside of your rectum that when you hit it, released extra fluids, made your ejaculate extra powerful and shot it extra far. Would that interest you? Because that's what stimulating the prostate does and stimulating the prostate is just one of the reasons that you might enjoy pegging. Another reason that you might enjoy pegging is novelty. It's different, it's unique. If you've been having sex with your partner for, I don't know, more than 10 times, it might be a fun way to switch things up. It's outside of the realm, it's outside of what's quote unquote normal, and it also offers you to an opportunity to switch sides. One person gets to be the receptive partner, the man who's usually the giving partner, and the other person gets to give when she's usually the one receiving. Which brings me to the third reason that people enjoy pegging, which is that it builds intimacy and trust between partners. Like, if someone asks me to have anal sex, to receive part of them in my butt, and they've never had anything in their butt before, ever, that I know that they don't really know what that feels like. It doesn't mean that they're going to be bad at being the giving partner during anal sex. It just means that they can't actually conceive what it feels like to have a penis enter your butt. And trust me on this one, if you haven't tried it already, having had something inside of your butt is universally going to make you better at putting things in other people's butts. Now, is it a precondition? No, absolutely not. But if you're considering pegging, think about that maybe as a way to switch roles, as a way of building intimacy and trust between you and your partner. But here's what you're really here for, right? How to peg. Well, the rules for pegging are very much the same rules as for anal sex. And being the receiving partner of anal sex, there are especially a couple things that I want you to keep in mind. Number one, it's not always a good time for anal. Anal requires preparation. 
if you can, eat clean for a couple days before, like salads, stay away from really greasy food and really dense, heavy meats. Like enjoy a salad or like a light lunch on the day that you're gonna be pegged. That's the ideal conditions. Of course, sometimes we're spontaneous. That's one of the nice things about sex. It can be planned or spontaneous. But if you have the opportunity to keep those things in mind. Number two, relaxation. The anus is actually made up of two different sphincters on the outside. One that we can relax with our minds by being in our bodies, taking nice deep breaths, achieving meditative states of zen, etc. But the other, we can't just boop, relax. It's, it's not like that. It's involuntary muscle, okay? And this is really good. It's great that our body has these two because it's what prevents accidents from happening. But when it comes to receiving things in the anus, both of them have to be able to relax. And one quick tip for relaxing your anus in order to achieve penetration is relaxing your throat. There's a sphincter in your throat, there's a sphincter in your anus. I don't know how it is that they are connected, but they are connected. And if you're really tight up here and you're holding your breath and you're really nervous and you're clenching down, trust me, it's not appropriate to ever push that or ever force anything into an anus that's not ready to receive it. So pegging might take a little bit of time, a little bit of preparation. And the third thing that it definitely takes is lubricant. The anus doesn't lubricate. The mouth lubricates, the vagina lubricates, the anus is pretty dry on its own. And so it's going to require lubrication in order to have a successful pegging experience. You don't need so much that it's like literally dripping off of you and down your legs and no, you don't need to like make a puddle underneath you, but you do need enough lube to make things slippery and smooth and enjoyable for the person on the receiving end. And then finally, anal sex of all varieties, but pegging especially requires good communication between partners. Uh, especially if the person who is doing the pegging, the person who's wearing or wielding the strap on has never given anal anything, anal penetration to another person, there's a sort of angle that you need to get just right. There's a cadence, there's a rhythm, there's an appropriate amount of pressure to apply and when. There is a right amount of push to give and pull to give. And you need to really be able to communicate with your partner in order to make sure that you are doing all those things in a way that feels pleasurable to them, at least until you get, until they get used to it, until they're like able to receive in and out stimulation. Maybe they don't even get there on the first try. Maybe pegging takes several tries before it happens smoothly. And that's okay too. It's not a, just a one and done thing. And the more patience that you have, not just in this session, but across sessions, the more pleasurable pegging can be. And a bonus tip or recommendation that I have is just keep a towel nearby. It's really nice to have a towel uh, in case there is any unwanted material that escapes the anus. Instead of pretending that it's not gonna happen or just like hoping, keeping your fingers crossed that it won't, grab a towel. So pegging requires some preparation. <laughs> okay, as an example, I'm gonna tell you about the first guy that I ever pegged. It was back when I was in grad school, probably around the age of like 23, 24, and my boyfriend at the time begged to be pegged. Like he was so about it, he really wanted it, and I was game and still am game for anything. I will try anything once. So I was like, yes, absolutely, let's peg you. We picked out a dildo. I really thought that he was um, being ambitious. Uh, based on the size of the dildo that he picked out, remember you can start small. You don't have to start with like the monster cock, you know, start with one that feels good. Probably start a little bit smaller than, uh, than you even think that you can take. But he picked out a, a fairly large dildo and I was like, okay, babe, you know, I've had anal sex before. I don't know if that's gonna feel good, but like, it's fine, let's go with it, okay? So I suit up, I, I bought a strap on um, because I wanted like the full experience. I wanted to be like hands free, you know? And uh, I suit up, get the strap on, make sure that, you know, you use a dildo that has an end, like a phalange, a base, um, because, you know, the, the anus is not a cul-de-sac, it is a street and it can just like keep going. But anyways, picked out a nice one, picked out one with the phalange, got it suited up, got my harness on. And I'm like, I'm so nervous for this guy because I think like he's not gonna be able to take it, like it's gonna be embarrassed, like he's, you know, like, I'm, I'm like, I'm like a little mama hen who's like, are you sure you're okay? Are you sure you're okay? Are you sure you're okay? And he's like, I'm okay, I'm okay, just do it. And I do it and I, I achieve insertion. And not just that, like it's easy. Like he has the easiest time. He is the most relaxed anus of any human being I have ever experienced before or since. He 
took it like a champ from the very first pump. I left that experience going, I think I could learn a two or thing about anal from you. Like how the hell did you get to be like an anal receiving master on your first try? And I don't know how it was and he couldn't really tell me. It's not like he had like a secret history of doing butt stuff. Like he was just very, very capable. He was very into it. He was very turned on by it. He, he wanted it and it worked for him and it worked for us. And we tried it many times after that. And I, honestly, he, he loved it probably even more than I did, but I loved that he loved it. So I did it and, and I did it with enthusiasm. To recap, pegging is something that normal people do. Heterosexual people all across the world are enjoying pegging. Heterosexual people of all ages, races, and locations enjoy doing insertive anal play because men have prostates, it feels good, it builds intimacy and trust, and it switches things up, spices things up, and creates novelty in the bedroom. If you're gonna do it, get some lube, take your time, practice great communication, and don't expect that it's going to go the way that it did for my ex and me on your very first try. It might, it might not. No matter what your experience are, be sure that you create an environment where both of you can feel safe and supported, and make sure you build in some time afterward to just like love on and appreciate each other. And if you want more advice, check out my other videos on being great partners, on having anal sex, on talking about anal sex, and if you liked this video, Give me a thumbs up. Tell me that you liked it. I would love for you to use your thumb <laughs> and point it affirmatively in the direction of up, letting me know that you enjoyed this video. And if you try pegging, please write in the comments. I wanna know, how did it go? Are you having the best sex life ever? Thanks y'all. <laughs>